Good morning. My name is Ann Pearson, and I would like to welcome you to the Tibbetts United Methodist Church worship service this Sunday morning, August 2nd, 2020. I hope you are continuing to enjoy summer activities during our Northwest summer in light of the pandemic. And I would like to point out that there is a link to the worship bulletin and song lyrics below this video. Let us pray. Teach us, sacred one, the multiplication tables of the kingdom, the exponential growth of love shared, kindness offered, and smiles sown in the fields of our daily routines. Teach us in this time not to be afraid, to seed the world with your love, not to fear the harvest of overwhelming blessing, to master the mathematics of abundance by which seven loaves of bread times a few small fish equals a feast for the multitude. Amen.
It's Pastor Sarah. Today I want to share with you a series of pictures and I'm hoping that you can help me identify what each picture is. Okay? So um, here is the first picture. What does that look like to you? That is actually a giraffe, right? So here's its ears, here's its long nose, um, here's its little horns. It's a giraffe head. Okay, we have a giraffe. Now, what is this? What does that look like to you? It's an elephant, right? We have the big flappy ears, we have the trunk. It's an elephant. Okay, one more. The last one is this. What is that? It's a seal, right? So you can see here's its uh, head, here's its little flippers, its body, it's a seal. So we have um, a giraffe, a seal, and an elephant. Now there's something amazing about these three pictures. Uh, when you look at them a particular way, they look like a giraffe, uh, they look like uh, an elephant, and they look like a seal, right? But when you turn them upside down, they actually look like something else. So let's work backwards. Let's start with this seal. So if we take this seal picture and we flip it upside down, now what do we have? It's a deer, right? You can see its ears, uh, its eyes, its nose. We have a deer. So it's a deer or a seal. Pretty cool, huh? So you can imagine where this is going. Uh, let's look at our elephant. When we flip this elephant upside down, what does it look like? It's a swan. See, it's feathers, it's beak, it's long neck. So we have a swan or an elephant. And finally, our giraffe. So what happens when we turn our giraffe upside down? It's a penguin. So you can see here's his webbed feet. Here's the flippers. Here's the head and the beak. So we have a giraffe or a penguin. Now, these pictures are really helpful in understanding how God wants us to view and look at the world. See, sometimes we look at something and we think we are so certain and so confident in what that is. We do this with people, right? We'll look at somebody and we think, oh, we know that person. We know who they are. But what God invites us to do is to take another look, to reframe, to turn inside out and upside down all the things we think we know and that we're certain of about one another and about our world. And Jesus, um, there's a story in the Bible where Jesus teaches the disciples this. And in the story, maybe you've heard it before, there's a big crowd of people, thousands of people, and they're all really hungry. And there are five loaves of bread and two fish. And uh, Jesus says to the disciples, we're going to feed all these people with this food. And the disciples are like, how can we feed all these people with five loaves of bread and two fish? Because when they look at that basket of food, they see that there's not enough there for all those people. But when Jesus looks at the basket of food, he sees enough to feed everyone. So Jesus reframes his view and his focus. And you know what? He is actually able to feed all of those people with just those five loaves of bread and those two fish. So I want you, when you think that you, th you feel stuck or you think you 100% know someone or know everything there is to know about a situation, I want you to keep an open mind and I want you to try um, reframing or flipping upside down 
whatever it is you're dealing with or looking at to see if there's another way to look at it. And that's what God helps us do. God gives us new eyes to see things we have never seen before. Will you pray with me? God, help us to be open to seeing one another and our circumstances and our world through your eyes. Help us to be open to seeing one another in new ways and help us to have an imagination so that we can see. We pray all these things in your holy name. Amen. Amen. Good morning. This morning's scripture is from the book of Matthew, chapter 14, verses 13 to 21. Now when Jesus heard this, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When Jesus went ashore, he saw a great crowd and he had compassion for them and he healed their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, We have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, Bring them here to me. And he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass and taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples and the disciples gave them to the crowds. And all ate and were filled and they took up what was left over of the broken pieces, 12 baskets full. And those who ate were about 5,000 men besides women and children. Will you pray with me? May the words of my mouth, the meditations of all our hearts, be acceptable to you, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. Our scripture reading this week comes from the 14th chapter of Matthew's Gospel, and it opens with Jesus withdrawing by himself to a deserted place. In the preceding verses, we learn that Jesus' cousin, John the Baptist, has been murdered. And given the context of these circumstances, it's no wonder that Jesus wants to go away by himself in need of some alone time. He's grieving. It's amazing how grieving the loss of a loved one can leave you so full and so empty all at the same time. Full of joy, of a life shared, full of memories, accompanied by deep loss, deep sadness. Early on in our days of social distancing and virtual worship, I preached from Romans chapter 8 and talked about the stages of grief, denial, anger, bargaining, depression, acceptance. Remember these stages are not linear and that everyone experiences grief differently. But grief is universal and at the same time deeply personal. Though we all experience grief, its effects on each of us manifest differently given our circumstances, our personalities, our coping skills, our values, our belief systems. For some of us, grief looks like anger. For some of us, it looks like deep sadness. For some of us, we need to be around people. For some of us, we need to retreat to a deserted place. For some of us, a grief looks like keeping ourselves busy and distracted. For some of us, grief looks like psychotherapy. For some of us, grief looks like numbness. For some of us, grief looks like isolation. It's part of being human. And I hope that we who call ourselves disciples of Jesus understand the importance of grief in our lives as people of faith. It's holy, as much as it is painful. 
We need to talk about it more, to name it more openly and without shame or fear of being judged. I personally have found a lot of the anger I feel is in fact grief, masking itself as anger. Disappointment in circumstances, situations, or people, that my anger is in fact a symptom of grief lying beneath the surface. And sometimes it's easier to be angry than to grieve. When I'm able to name my grief, it allows me greater opportunity to cope in ways that are healing and healthy. As you can see, I found myself again reflecting on grief as I studied the story of Jesus feeding the 5,000. The context of this story is in fact grief. And the crowds don't seem to care that Jesus is grieving. They don't seem to care why he withdrew to be alone, why he went to the deserted place. They follow him on foot. Now Jesus would have every right to be irritated with them for not giving him some space. But instead, the text tells us he has compassion on the crowd and he cured their sick. Imagine that sometimes grief looks like compassion. When it gets late, the disciples are ready to call it a night, and they tell Jesus it's time to send these people away so they can go get food for themselves. The disciples' attitude is that the people should take responsibility for their own hunger and go and get something to eat. That sounds pretty good to me, actually. Why is it the disciples' responsibility to feed these 5,000 people? But Jesus says, they don't need to go, you feed them. And the disciples reply, we have nothing but five loaves and two fish. Ah, the but, <laughs> we have nothing but. It might also be translated, translated as only. We only have five loaves and two fish. Now we find this story in all four gospel accounts, and though they all differ slightly in detail, they all have the same outcome. Jesus is able to feed the large crowd with what they have, five loaves and two fish. We often read this story during stewardship campaigns and talk about the theme of abundance, how we as people of faith are called to live out of abundance rather than scarcity. One of the things that makes scripture so timeless and sacred is that it speaks to us in multiple contexts and multiple circumstances. So I have been asking myself, what does this story mean for us in the context of COVID-19 and in the context of so much political and social unrest, in the context of so much tension and isolation. In a time when the economic divide between the wealthy and poor is so incredibly vast, and a time when our economy is more fragile and volatile than ever before. And I can't seem to shake the connection between Jesus' state of grief, his extension of compassion towards the people, and the act of abundance that comes from it. There is a correlation there for us who find ourselves in a wilderness of grief right now. Each of us doing what we can to get through these times, trying to honor one another in our different ways of approaching and responding to our new normal. Are you finding that your grief creates opportunity and space for compassion to live and grow? If not, why is that? Maybe you have compassion fatigue. Maybe all of your energy is going into self-compassion to help you get through this time. Both of those are valid. The story of Jesus feeding 5,000 plus people with five loaves of bread and two fish is about reframing how we view and see the world and ourselves. It's about reframing our grief, reframing our compassion, reframing our abundance. 
Coronavirus has forced us to reframe so much in our lives. Perhaps you're tired of reframing, of refocusing. Then again, this is the constant work of discipleship, isn't it? Repenting and reframing and reimagining our lives and our world over and over and over again. May God give you courage to reflect and reframe whatever it is you are currently experiencing and going through. And may we as a collective community be hyper aware of how God is shaping us and changing us during these times. And may we be open to reframing in order to see and know and experience God's love, God's compassion, God's abundance, even in the midst of our grief. Thanks be to God. Amen. As we continue to God in prayer, a reminder, if you have a joy or a concern that you would like for us to lift up in worship, you could submit that to me or to the church office. The email addresses are found in the bulletin linked below this video. Also there, you'll find the contact information to submit a request specifically to the prayer chain. So if you would like to do that, I invite you to take a look at the bulletin and submit those. We turn our attention first to the joys among us and in our community. A joy for our Tibbetts staff and for the Tibbetts worship team who continue to serve and share their gifts despite changing and difficult circumstances. Loving God, we give you thanks. A joy for consistent and continued financial giving among Tibbetts church members and families and friends. Loving God, we give you thanks. A joy for those who are engaging in racial justice work and both the individual and collective work of addressing their white privilege. Loving God, we give you thanks. We now turn our attention towards those concerns among our community. Prayers for Chuck as he mourns the death of his wife, Tammy Wilson, and for their daughter, Christy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Continued prayers for Ting Ting, who is okay, but still recovering from a fall. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
Prayers for those who are grieving the loss of loved ones. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We bring all these joys and all these concerns we've named aloud and the ones we hold in our hearts as we come to God in a time of prayer. Let us pray. Loving God, we are feeling the heat of summer and we continue to walk through the waters of the unknown, being forced to adapt, to be flexible. And it's not the summer we imagined for ourselves, O oh God. And so we pray that we would become aware of your presence in the midst of ever-changing circumstances, in the midst of spiking numbers of illness and COVID cases, in the midst of rollbacks, in the midst of so much that seems to be constantly changing and morphing. Remind us, O oh God, that your love for us is steady and constant, whether we find ourselves walking through a valley of grief and loss or standing on the mountaintop fully in tune with your spirit and your presence, you are with us you love us, you do not abandon us. For all those, O oh God, who are feeling desperately and deeply alone and unloved, we pray that they would know your grace, your peace, your forgiveness, your mercy. For those, O oh God, who find themselves in seasons of grief and sadness, we pray for deep comfort and for healing. For those who are in treatment for cancer, for their loved ones and caregivers, for their doctors and nurses and medical teams, we pray for confidence, for clarity, we pray for steady hands and for strong hearts. O oh God, we pray all these things and we ask that you would make yourself known through the voices of those who have been oppressed and now are rising up through the presence of their allies standing alongside them, encouraging them. For all those who continue to navigate the deep loss, especially our black and brown siblings who have been murdered and killed. And for those, O oh God, who are longing for another way, another world, we pray that we ourselves would be part of reimagining, reframing, and re-envisioning a world where all know themselves to be loved and where justice is present. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus, who teaches us to grieve, who teaches us how to be compassionate, and who teaches us how to live out of abundance. We pray this prayer Jesus taught us together now. Our Father and Mother, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, the glory, now and forever. Amen. Steps 
friends, just a few announcements for you as we close our service. On Wednesday, August 12th at 6.30 p.m., I'll be offering an online communion service via Zoom. This is similar to the one that we did in July, only it will take place on a Wednesday evening. You're asked to provide your own bread and your own juice, and we will gather in this Zoom gathering, and I'll bless the elements, and we'll break bread together virtually. The link and information can be found in the weekly announcement email, which you can subscribe to by going to our church website, tibbetsumchurch.org, and you can click the tab that says subscribe. Uh, the link invitation to join can also be found under events on our church website. We are in need of some help and some volunteers. First of all, someone who has uh, video editing skills who would be willing to be a backup to edit our weekly worship videos and would be willing to fill in one or two Sundays so that Zach Martin, our worship leader and choir director who has been editing our videos every week since March 15th, since we've been doing virtual worship, can take a much needed and deserved break. So if you or even someone you know has this skill set and could um, string together different video contributions to create a worship video, please let me or Betsy Wharton know our worship ministry area coordinator. I'm also looking for three to four people who can assist with no contact delivery of communion elements to our heritage members between August 8th and August 12th. So you would be dropping off bread and juice. You would contact the person ahead of time so they would know you're coming, but it would be no contact delivery. We ask you leave it outside the door on their porch so that our heritage members who do not have access uh, to Zoom and are not able to leave to go to the grocery store can have communion. And finally, my last Sunday before maternity leave is Sunday, August 16th, and Reverend Sharon Moe will be introduced in worship that day, and then she will begin her part-time interim on Monday, August 17th. We are also asking if you would please reach out to Tibbet staff members and let them know how much you appreciate the work they're doing during this time of COVID. It's difficult uh, to communicate when we're not seeing each other physically in person every week. And so just send an email. All the staff email addresses can be found on the church website and let them know that you appreciate all they're doing. This uh, also goes along with our leadership as well. And all of our leadership, including um, pictures of each of our leadership team members is also found on the website. Speaking of, if you are able to give, you can do so electronically uh, through our church website, and you can also give by sending a check uh, to the church directly with the attention financial secretary. Our address is 3940 41st Avenue Southwest, Seattle, Washington, 98116. And with that, let us close in prayer. Loving God, we give you thanks for the opportunity to stay connected through these videos, for each person that contributes, for the hands that have the technical skills and eyes to edit each week, for our musicians, for our scripture readers, for those who are working behind the scenes, our videographers, we say thank you. And we pray, O oh God, that as we continue on this path of discipleship, we would know your presence and that you would help us to be ever aware of the gift of grief, compassion, and abundance that you bring to us in every season. We pray all these things in your holy name. Amen. Amen.